good body popping. You couldn't write it. <clears throat> Welcome back guys to another video. This one wasn't one I was hoping I'd have to do. Uh, you, could, you couldn't write this shit, I'm telling you. So we were going, you know, just going shopping as you do in the race car uh, in the 350. Come around a roundabout, going around, you know, somebody on a bicycle, so you steady as you are. And for some reason as I went around him, the slip light came on, so I was like, oh balls, you know. Wasn't really like oh balls. But as I went around him, the slip light came on uh, for, for some bizarre reason. We were only getting like 20 miles an hour, uh, if, if that, because we were getting around this bloke on a bike. And then all of a sudden, when I tried to go back in gear, just nothing. And we just carried on rolling. I was like, oh, I must have missed the gear. We tried again, nothing. Went into second, nothing. Went into third, nothing. And then the engine was still revving. Um, yeah, so we went, but there was just nothing, and the slip light kept coming on, so he pulled over, as you do. I was like, oh crap, so the car's broke. Luckily, on the way back from the shop, you know what? Missed the whole section out. Let's start again. I'll start this bit again. So, I had a bit of a bad day on, you know, a couple of days ago. So, I went to the shop in the 350Z, having a great time. You know, we was not going to have a good time going to the shop in a race car. Got to the shop, got all my bits. Realised hard, left my wallet at home, so that was instant number one. Rang my housemate, luckily they were around the corner, uh, and they just came, sorted me out, uh, so that I could pay them back when, when we got home. On the way home, this is where the real drama started. So, I was coming back from the shop, I was coming off a roundabout, getting around some bloke on a bike about 10, 15 miles an hour. Slip light came on, trying to come back onto the power, you know, back into second gear. Nothing happened and we were slowing down, so I was like, oh, I've just missed the gear like a nonce. Tried to get back into first, started revving, slip light come on again. I was like, what's going on here? No power going to the back wheels. Engine sounded fine, there was no crunching. I was just like, oh my God, what, what's going on? So, rolled to a stop. Luckily, like I say, housemate was behind me. They pulled over and was like, oh, what's going on? I've got no power. We need more speed. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. So I'm going to go into this car park. Luckily, I was next to a car park. So I rolled into the car park, got out of the car, looked underneath in the dark. What, what I was expecting to see, I do not know, but I looked anyway. Obviously, didn't see anything. Still had no power. Um, so my housemate went, grabbed his 350Z, grabbed a rope and towed me home. Luckily we're only around the corner. But yeah, so the 350Z is broke. Had no idea what was wrong with it. Got onto the owner's club at first, because I was just like so in shock, because it was such a new car. It's only like, a, what are we now? A month, two months old. Um, well, to me anyway, obviously it's not it's an old car. But, so I had no idea what was going on. So I was onto the owner's club, told, told them what was going on. Uh, so I had, I had a few ideas to, to start looking, so we looked. So the prop shaft does turn, so, and then the drive shafts don't turn, which is quite a common sign as the diff's broke. And we've only just finished fixing the diff on the MX-5, so I really did not want to be doing this again anytime soon. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to go down, get the car up, make sure that it's definitely diff, we're going to jack it up, put it in gear, see if the wheels turn. I'm hoping at this point that they don't turn, because now I'm convinced it's the diff. Hopefully the diff, I mean the rear wheels don't turn, and then when hopefully that happens, or if only one turns, then that still says the diff's broke. And then we're going to um, empty the oil, and hopefully find some metal in the oil. This all sounds daft, but the way I look at it is if we know that's the problem then, and then we can order a diff, and get it fitted and get it over with. So let's go down, get the car up and have a look, shall we? On a positive note, we have got uh, the wheels down here now with the racing wets on, so when the car is fixed, hopefully we'll be able to get a, a day on uh, Castle Coombe or something like that. I'd like to do a normal track day before we start changing all the suspension for, for drifting, so, so yeah. I'm excited, we'll get a track day in as soon as we can once it's finally fixed. Right, so now in theory, 
when we start it, one or none of the wheels should turn. So let's see. Let's see if we go in gear. Skipper, look. Analysis. It looks like a small incandescent bulb designed to indicate something out of the ordinary, like a malfunction. Set lights going on, all we're doing, we're not even on the power. Yeah, so both both the drive shafts were spinning actually, so and the squeaking was coming from back left wheel. So we might have something wrong with that drive shaft. So we'll take the wheel off and have a seat. Get close to that. Sorry about that one. Right, so now the wheel's off. Let's do it again and see where it's coming from. I think it's the CV joint that's give way because obviously the drive shaft isn't broke and the noise is coming from in here so I think it's the CV joint that's broke so we're just going to take the whole drive shaft off I think it'll be easier personally to uh, replace the whole drive shaft so in order to do that we take this bolt out here and we take these six bolts out uh, connected to the dip I've done two so far um, they're an absolute nightmare so what I'm doing is getting the spanner, 14mm on the back there, and wedging it against the subframe and using the breaker bar to just twist on this one. That's the only way I'm getting them off. Because I can't go up to get the car any higher. Because I don't know why, but it makes me nervous having the car on axle stands, even though it's way safer. So as you can see, took all them bolts out and thankfully the 350 is like face to face, um, drive shaft to diff, where the MX-5 slotted in, this one's like the prop shaft to the MX-5, I mean the prop shaft's the same here so it just bolts to that face. So that's half the job done, just need to go get a deep 32mm for this one because this goes on but it doesn't quite go on all the way because uh, this this stops it it hits there so I don't want to attempt to get it off with that one because I don't want to round that because uh, that would be a nightmare so we'll go get one of them it's half job however it does mean we'll just have to slide these back through them holes just to stop that from from spinning when we come to take the this nut off but you know half a job done we'll look at how much drive shafts are and try and get one ordered because uh, apparently this CV joint is a bit of a nightmare to do and the MX-5 drive shaft came with it all on so it's just uh, easy to replace in my mind so yes I think I'm going to call it a day for now so I can get this bolt off because it's a freezing November day and I'm jittering, body popping, freezing so, uh, so yeah, I'll just pull the wheel back on, pack up for today and then we'll carry on when we've either got the drive shaft so we can just do a straight swap then. Yeah, probably do that, so. See you when we've got the drive shaft. Eventually. Back to another day. So, the axle has finally arrived. Looks a bit beat up, but it'll be all right. I haven't got my wire brush with me, so I'll have to do that. But let's be honest, it's only going to be fine. Major drama is getting it though. Obviously, because nothing goes smoothly for us, does it? So, it should have been delivered yesterday um, in between one and two so come you know like half past two I was like hasn't come checking the trucking apparently been signed for and delivered I mean I'd never had it and there was this picture 
So the picture is in a in the corridor in a block of flats, and that wasn't my block of flats because well I don't live in a block of flats. So I'll phone Gilla Cole, send a driver to sort it out. I think I know where the flats might be. So I went for a wander, saw it through the window, as you can see, and there's definitely I live in number 76. And there's no 76 in this block of flats. So why on earth did they leave it there? I don't know. So someone really needs to learn how to read numbers. However, we're here. We're here. We've got it. It's too cold for this shit. It, you know, in Stoke, there's blankets now everywhere. Today and last night, it's just been windy as balls. So it's really cold. So I just want to get on with it. Because I don't know when else we're going to have time. So what we need to do is take off the axle nuts. We're going to have to drop the back box just so we can get the old axle out. So the new axle in. Put the back in. Put the, put the exhaust back on. And we should be golden. Fingers crossed. Simple as that, he says, so let's see how simple it really is. We've already got the wheel off, so it should be nice and small and bolting and bolting and getting cold. Man, that rubber was wild hard because it was cold. However, I don't think we need to take the back off. I think we just just that bit off because now there's space for the axle to come down and the new one to go up. So let's give us some taps to try and get it out. And also, some of the bearings from the other CV have come out, so it's definitely the axle that's broken and not the diff, which is banging news. Looks like when it happened to the MX-5, doesn't it? Well yeah, that explains a lot about why it was broken. We've got my uh, grease, so a bit of CV grease going to it, and uh, I'm going with it. Better than having none. I don't need much, just a little bit. Just a brief material. back on so moment of truth let's turn it on and hopefully the wheel will turn we've done it thank god well happy but that's fixed 
we'll uh, get up the stands now then and uh, just go for a small drive, make sure she's uh, golden. Chuffed. That wasn't actually that wasn't actually as difficult as it could have been. Touch wood. But uh, yeah. Chuffed, chuffed. I'm bleak cold though. But we're done. Right, you'll have to excuse the oil on my face in the last bit. You know, I was just trying to fill out my beard where it doesn't grow properly. But, moment of truth. Let's, uh, let's see if it drives. Yeah. <laughs> She's working. She's purring. She's purring. She's fixed. So let's go for a bit of a, a drive then, just give her a run. Oh, it's good to have it running again. So, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like and subscribe if, uh, if you did enjoy it. You know, if there's anything you want to see, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. But, yeah, see you in the next one guys. Take care. Back on, dog. Go back and subscribe. This is Callum. Let's go. And